David. What are you Come doing? On. Announcements. Oh. oh. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to SRSF. My name is David Talley. My name's Hannah Durkee. And I'm Cassie Richmond. And we're here to welcome you to SRSM Online! <laughs> here at SRSM, we want to let you guys know that you are included and you are loved for exactly who you are. You are going to be equipped to make an impact in your community when you leave our doors or when you shut off your screen watching us right now. Yep. And big announcement for Mother's Day coming up. If you have a mom, this is perfect for you. Uh, we want you to videotape yourself asking four questions. The first question is, what makes your mom happy? The second question is, what makes your mom angry? Be careful on that one. And the third one, what is your mom's favorite thing to say to you? Like my mom's always like, oh, sugar's bad for you. Like that's <laughs> real. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. The fourth one is, what is her favorite thing just in general? And fifth, we always want you to pray for your moms and love them. In addition to that, we are doing something that we like to call Nama Mom! Nama Mom. Let's try yes! Nama Nama Mom. Mom. We did it! So Nama Mom means you are going to nominate a mom in your life that goes above and beyond for you and for people around her. She doesn't even have to be your own mom. But I suggest you nominate your mom because the prize is something unlike anything I've ever experienced from yeah. a church before. Uh -huh. We are going to be delivering fresh hot cooked meals from Ruth's Chris straight to the homes of three deserving mothers. So this is very exciting to nominate your mom. You're going to DM us on Instagram. You can message us on Facebook or you can email us at info at shatterrockchurch.com. Right there. Also, we have Zoom meetings uh, for youth, 6 p.m., uh, and then we'll go out into breakout sessions after that. So join us on Zoom. What's up, everybody? We are going to play a game right now. This is going to be the greatest game you have ever heard in your entire lives. Um, we are all representing different groups. So let's start off. I'm representing all of you middle school girls right now. That's right. I'm, I'm representing the middle school boys. He's staying safe. High school girls, woo! High school boys, yes. And we are all going to be blindfolded and we are gonna spin this uh, lovely camera right here and whoever it lands on, that person is out and they get pied in the face. One, two, three. Five, Five four, three, two, two one, stop. stop. Yeah, rock, paper, scissors. All right. Rock, paper, paper scissors, scissors too. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Hey! All right, Cass, we're so sorry. Three, ready? One. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're so <laughs> I'm spinning. I don't believe you are. I think you're just oh, yeah. spinning. Yeah, yeah. Five, four, three, two, <laughs> right. one, What, Cameron? Stop. No way. It's on. It's in between. No, it was. Five, three, two, one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> The high school boys <laughs> and middle school girls. Let's go. <laughs> All right, David, let's spin let's it. Let's do it. Here we go. Yes, high school boys. Oh, 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 oh. I want to recount. <laughs> Did a full one. Those are you. That Did one is you. What are you doing? Oh. <laughs> Up. You missed my face. Well, I guess Cameron won. Yes! <laughs> middle school girls! Who made this mess? So, when you don't know how to do something, how to fix something, or how something works, what do you do? Ask a teacher? Ask your parents? Ask your friends? Ask someone you really know and trust? No! You go to the internet and ask some randos. But I'm not talking about creeps here. I hope. No, I mean the people of the internet! You know, those people who make how-to videos. Because chances are, if you're trying to figure out something, someone on the internet has already figured it out for you. Things like, how do I unsend a text? No. How do I do a winged eyeliner? How do I get rid of the zit by Friday night? How do I get out of gym class? How do I screen cap Snapchat without getting caught? But then there are things in life 
that don't have an easy fix, that don't have a simple solution, that don't have a how-to video. Things like what to do when you have problems with family, or when it seems like you have no control in your life, or what to do when someone has done something to you. I mean, clearly, they gotta go. The truth is, there's a lot of life that doesn't have a solution you can just find online. So how do you know what to do when you don't know what to do? Hey, what's up guys? I am Aiden Miller. I am the youth pastor at Shadow Rock Church. We got some amazing volunteers with us today. This is David on now on my left and this is Cass on my right, but look at it, it switches now, so kind of crazy. Uh, that's called science. Um, They've been so helpful. We're filming some stuff today. Um, pray a prayer of thankfulness for them because they are just excellent. Hannah, also, I want to highlight her. She's been editing all these videos and is doing an amazing job. We cannot be doing any of this without her. Um, she is just literally the brains behind this. She's not here right now, but uh, you don't know that, so maybe she is here. So we've got some good stuff uh, for you today. Hey, uh, I like having David here. It's way better with him. Cassie, you know, I got my good friends. Hey, uh, today we're going to talk about the hard, difficult, confusing thing called life. I think life is a whole lot like the game of Uno. I love Uno. Um, I used to play Uno all night with my friends, but I don't know about you, but there seems like every time I play, I get to my one card left, and you know, if you go in a clockwise circle, the person to the right goes, and, and it keeps going. If I have a blue five, you know, they lay down a blue, they blue, they blue, they're blue, they're blue, and then it gets to the person finally to the left of me, and I start to pray, God, if they just lay down a blue and or a five, then I'm going to win the game. It's going to be so awesome, and maybe you've been here, but right before you're about to win down, uh, win the game, someone lays one of these cards right here, which make grown men cry. You guys ever see these right here? This room your day. I think right now many of us um, feel like we are in an unfair Uno game. Uh, maybe some of you seniors, you've been training so hard for track season, all off season. You're eating healthy, you're waking up early, you're going to special coaches, you're doing all that you can to have the best season ever. And then your senior season comes and it gets canceled. That is an unfair or maybe some of you guys have been studying so hard for tests and you're doing all that you can to pass, uh, you know, whatever, uh, what are some tests, ACT, uh, SAT, stuff like that. Um, if you're a lawyer, what's that one? The bar. The bar. I know some of you high schoolers are studying for the bar test, right? Um, but whatever it may be, you're working so hard and all of a sudden your life changes and you get a pick up four card and it's not fair and it should not be that way. We've been talking about the story of a man named Joseph and I just want to share a little bit of his story today, just a part of it. Um, if you want to put that map up, it's in a city called Hebron, um, like Lebron, um, Kobe or, you know, but Hebron. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to go over this just a little bit. So he lived in a little city in Hebron. It's called Hebron. And uh, what happened was he was very favored by his father named Jacob. And Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children. He, he would give him special presents and he cared for him especially more than any of his other um, siblings. Do any of you guys feel like your younger siblings like that at all? Come on, amen. I know you guys are there. Um, Dave is actually a youngest child, so he knows the blessed life. But anyway... Um, for many, uh, for much of Joseph's life, it looked like he just had one card, one card, dad, one card left. And um, so he's really close to his father. He loves his father. And one day, his father tells all his 12 brothers to go up to the city of Shechem. Now, Shechem is a 50-mile journey from Hebron. So those 12 siblings go all the way up to Shechem for 50 miles. Now, some time passes, and Joseph's father eventually asks him to go to Shechem by himself to check on his brothers and report back to him. Now, I don't know about you, but walking 50 miles to find some brothers um, that he didn't really get along with, that's like a plus two card, you know what I mean? Like, that is not the best thing, but, you know, he wants to obey his father, he wants to do the right thing, he wants to do the will or the mission that his father is sending him on, so that's exactly what he does. He gets all stuff together and he goes to the city of Shechem. For 50 miles, he travels alone by himself day and night to find his siblings. And he gets to the city of Shechem and while he's there, he realizes something and it's that his siblings are not there. And he gets news that they went up another 15 miles to Dothan. Now, Dothan is um, the city filled kind of in the mountains with empty wells, and we'll talk about that later. But when he realizes that they're in Dothan, he does something that I would not do, but he goes and searches for them there. 
Now, I don't know about you guys, but if my father told me, um, you know, to go search for my brothers that I'm already, you know, I'm already having a bad relationship with uh, for 50 miles, and then I get to where he wants me to go and I can't find him, the Lord knows I'm just turning around. I'm not going another 15 miles, you know what I mean? Like, if I'm supposed to walk to Palm Desert, I'm not going to walk to Indio after to search for them. So, but that's exactly what he does. Um, you know, I got to thinking, like, I'm like those people, or you know those people with Fitbits, and they're like, oh, I've walked 13,000 steps today or something. I'm like, I walked 10, and that's it. You know, I can't even stand during a whole message without getting tired. Like, I just got to sit down and, you know, have a good conversation with you guys. But, and I also was thinking, um, our pastor, he just had surgery this past week, stage 4 cancer, um, this huge surgery, and I'm getting news that he's, like, walking down the hallway and stuff, and uh, literally, like, the day of his surgery, right, or the day after, something crazy, and I thought to myself, my pastor was stage four cancer um, for eight months, d- just literally cut out a bunch of stuff of his body, is beating me in the amount of steps I take a day. <laughs> like, I got a problem. I got to start stepping up my step. Um, and don't judge me. I know some of you guys probably take eight steps a day, and yeah. it's to the bathroom and back. Uh, so we're all in this together. High school musical. Um, but anyway, so he goes to Dothan, and when he gets to Dothan, I just imagine this, a 75-mile trip walking day in and day out and all day he's walking to the city of Dothan on this huge mission simply because he's trying to obey the will of his father simply because he wants to please his father back home and he continues to walk and I image him getting closer and his feet are bleeding his body's aching he's sweaty he's got this peach fuzz he's only 17 years old and he's walking and he's traveling in the hot sun and everything is going wrong and he's telling himself just to lay down just to give up just to quit just to go home but because he wants to obey the father he continues to go on this journey and when he gets to Dothan, he finally arrives and, and he sees all of his 12 brothers and, and he goes to greet them, but they, they, they let the enemy attack their mind. They were filled with conflict with David. And what they do is they take off his special coat that the father gave them and, or gave him and they throw him into the bottom of a well. And they actually plan to murder their younger sibling. The people that were supposed to protect David are now trying, David, David, the people that are trying to uh, protect Joseph are now trying to murder him. What a terrible twist. And I image Joseph's like uh, a lot like me and you today. But he's at the bottom of this well, and I image he's bloody from the fall, he's bloody from the walk, he's in so much pain because he's made this huge journey, and he's sweaty, and he's upset, he's mad, and he's got tears running down his face. And I image him saying, I was simply trying to obey, trying to do the mission that my father sent me on. This is not fair. This is not how it should be. I should not be here. This isn't how it should be. Joseph's uh, family they, or brothers eventually pull him out of the well and I image him coming out, probably expecting to be murdered by his siblings, but another twist happened. They actually sell him into slavery in the city of Dothan and when he's in slavery, he makes another huge journey all the way to the city or the country of Egypt, but this time he was not a free man. This time he was a slave and he gets to this foreign land and he's, and he's um, people believe he's, he's, uh, he's set in like an auction and he's sold to the, excuse me, he's sold to the house of Potiphar, which is like the king of Egypt at the time, and he's sold to this house. He's the lowest of lowest. And I want to read a verse from you from Genesis chapter 39, verse 2. Listen to this. Uh, it says, verse 2, the Lord was with Joseph. He's farther than his father than he's ever been in his whole entire life. His family's betrayed him. He's been thrown into the bottom of the well. He's made a huge journey with hundreds and hundreds of miles. And his life's falling completely apart. And the Lord was with Joseph. And what I've realized in the story of Joseph is sometimes when I'm trying to obey God, my father, and I'm trying to do the will that he set before me, I'm going to hit some trials in my life. I'm going to pick up some extra cards and it's going to seem like a completely unfair game of Uno. But when I'm trying to obey my father, I can be sure that the Lord is with me. 
that the Lord is here to protect me, that the Lord is here to encourage me. Guys, I want you to know whatever situation you're going through, maybe you're struggling with anxiety, depression, maybe your family's falling apart, maybe um, people are mistreating you, whatever it may be, I want you to know the Lord is with you when you simply try to follow God. He wants to be there to lift you up, to encourage you, to bless you, to love on you. And I've also realized this one thing. When the Lord comes into our life, he doesn't make it easy. In fact, he makes it difficult, but it is so, so worth it. And he gives us a friend to walk with. Jesus walked the uh, planet a few thousand years after Joseph. And I just want to share a little thing from his teaching, but he gets his group together. And this is what he says. He says, you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gates is wide for the many who choose that way. Listen to this. But the gateway to life is narrow, and the road is difficult. Only a few ever find it. While Jesus is on this planet, he gets this group together, and he says, listen, you got to understand, I'm not here to make your life easy. That's not why I've come. I've come to set you free, and I've come to give you life. And in fact, your walk with me is going to be difficult. It's going to seem like an unfair game of Uno, and at many times you're going to want to give up. But if you stay on this path, if you stay connected with me, you will receive eternal life. And here's the good news, guys. Our God, we believe he is three in one. We believe in God the Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All has one God with three different beings. Um, I hope that makes sense to you. It's a deep topic. Uh, we're going to talk about that later. But three in one. And here's the good news. God the Father sent Jesus Christ on a mission. And what seemed like he was, what seemed, uh, he, he, he left, Jesus left heaven and came to earth and it seemed like he was farther away from God than he could ever imagine. But when he was on this earth, he died on a cross and three days later he rose from the dead, giving his spirit to all those who believe. God turned this awful situation around for good. And we're going to learn that about Joseph later, but as of right now, we got to understand if we put our trust, if we put our faith if we put ourselves in Jesus Christ, he will give us a spirit which will be our friends. Because when we come to God, our life does not become easy, but it becomes so, so worth it. And one day this world will come to pass and we'll be in heaven with Jesus and we're going to turn up. It's going to be so fun. Uh, there's going to be no more crying, no more weeping, no more tears, and it's going to be the best thing ever. But as of right now, Jesus wants to be your friend. And he wants to walk with you through the problems that you're facing. He wants to walk with you through this coronavirus. He wants to walk with you through divorces. He wants to walk with you through anxiety. He wants to walk with you through depression. And he wants to be your friend. He wants to be with you. Maybe you're watching this video and you want to make that decision. And I'm telling you, it's the best decision you're ever going to make. But pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you are Lord. Make me more like you, and I want to know you more. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you did that prayer, it's the best thing that you're ever, ever going to do. Your walk with God is not a one-time decision. It is a lifelong commitment. So this week, I encourage you to read some of this book. Start in the book of Matthew. Just open it up and try to find it, okay? That's where you should start. Or Mark, okay? Don't start at the beginning or the end. It's going to be confusing. Start in Mark or Matthew, okay? Right, David? Me and David made that mistake when we first started. Don't start with Revelations. Don't do it. Uh, honestly, if you're reading something, I guess we're happy. But whatever you do. Um, but it's going to be the best decision you ever make. Jesus wants to be your friend. Um, he wants to include you in his family. He wants to love on you. And in return, he wants you to go make an impact where you're at. So this week, share someone, uh, share with someone the good news of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Hope to see you sometime soon.